thanks. So I am Yuan Bering. I'm the host of uh, International Consulting Videocast, and I'm now uh, talking with uh, you, Sandy. Yes. From Hey Sandy PR Company. Yes, Hey Sandy PR and Communications in West Palm Beach, Florida. That sounds great. Could you tell me more about uh, what uh, your company is doing and maybe a little bit about its background? Well, sure. Um, I've spent the last 20 years in television. And so about five years ago, I decided, I've always wanted to run my own PR company. So about five years ago, um, my husband unfortunately um, died from a, a long-term illness. Um, and so, you know, one of my kids was, uh, you know, wasn't dealing with it very well as expected. And so I just stepped away from the newsroom and um, waited for a little bit and then opened up Hey Sandy PR and Communications. What I do is I help small businesses, nonprofits, companies. I help them to get media attention. I help them with their PR needs. Okay, I don't do um, branding. I just do PR, public relations. I help them, you know, if they have a, you know, I create stories for them. If they have something going on, just to bring them awareness, okay, to bring awareness to their brand. So I, uh, Step back, like I said, from the newsroom and started and started uh, my own company. And the name Hey Sandy, how that name came about was uh, in the newsroom. I dealt with I was the assignment manager, and I like to say I had a newsroom full of kids. So you have adults, but they're still kids, okay, in a certain way. So um, <clears throat> every time people would come to work every morning, they would walk up to in the front of the desk and they would say, hey, Sandy, hey, Sandy, and I'd be, hey, hey, hey. And so when I was ready to um, start my own firm, I, you know, had a group of friends, um, Marie and some other friends of mine, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, what am I going to name myself? And one of them just said, well, that's, you know, that's a no brainer. Hey, Sandy, because everybody calls you Hey, Sandy, and that and that's true to today. So wherever I go, people are like, Hey, Sandy, and I'm like, Hey, Hey, Sandy, Hey. So that's how Hey, Sandy came about. But it's very, I love um, what I do. I love getting media coverage for uh, small businesses, nonprofits. I love to see people when they see themselves on TV or in the newspaper or on the radio or on podcasts. They are just so excited and feel so accomplished that people are aware of what they're doing. So that brings me joy. Yeah, actually, Hey Sunny is very catchy. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, that sounds very nice. Thank so, you. So you mentioned you, you worked in medias for 20 years. Yes. That yes, I worked in the television station. Um, I started out, as a matter of fact, as an intern. And I started in the television stations um, when Hurricane Andrew happened in, in Florida. That was many, many moons ago. <laughs> okay. And I started out then, and there was a, um, a reporter there. Her name, I'll never forget her. Her name was Sally Fitz. And I loved um, what they were doing. And so they started interviewing me on the field um, because I was asking uh, the community for help. Uh, to bring pampers and food and all sorts of stuff for the community um, that was devastated by the storm. So this guy shows up with a big 40 foot container and he says, is there, says, where's Sandy? And I just looked around, I'm like, here I am. He said, well, you just said you wanted, um, you needed pampers. He said, well, I got you a 40 foot container full of pampers. I was, what? And I realized the power of the media at that time. And so, of course, I wanted to continue on. And Sally Fitz got me in as a intern. And she said to me, and I'd never forget, she says, now you're in here as an intern. You need to make your own way. You don't need to be hanging around my desk or my, you know, what I'm doing. You need to make your own way and what you want to do. And I took it from there. And I did. And I uh, moved up the ladder um, end up leaving, that was WSVN in Miami. I worked with WSVN for almost for 10 years, then left and went to WIOD, News Radio 610 WIOD, reported there, had a baby in the car, <laughs> my fifth son in the news car <laughs> after I was done with work. That was interesting. And then I left the news business and we left Florida for a while. We went to Colorado. 
uh, stayed in Colorado for a little bit, and then my husband got sick. And when the doctor told us that he was terminal, uh, he said, it's time for us to get back to Florida so you can be close to family, so have family in the Bahamas. So um, I ended up coming here, uh, very close to family. So when he passed, I was able to be surrounded by family, friends. And at that time I went back into news, which was great. So uh, during the news day, I was responsible for helping reporters with their stories. So they would come in and they would give me story pitches. And if it doesn't fit into what our plan was for the day or the branding that we wanted or the platform, I should say, whatever we wanted, I would help them to either make that story the way we needed it to be, or I would assign them stories, um, you know, I would assign them stories that I have already pre-selected for them to do. So I built a great relationship with them because especially the new reporters coming into a market, you don't know what the bosses want. And I was one of three people who decided practically on a daily basis what went on air and what didn't. And you don't know what they want. And so it's kind of intimidating for the younger reporter. So I think that's how I got such a great relationship with them because the ones that were a, a, a little nervous, I would always walk them through things. And if they came in and they didn't have a story idea that was really good, I would give them my story idea and I'd say, pitch this as your own. And that went a long way. And I, well, I knew the stories that I pitched would get, would, would, would say, yeah, we're gonna take the story, we're gonna do it. So I would give them that power to pitch it as their own. And they felt, uh, they felt like somebody was was helping them and 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 you know and just working with them through a difficult process until they learn the market, learn the people, learn who they needed to be, uh, who they need to talk to, learn who people they needed to have in their Rolodex. And I think that's the mommy in me that I always wanted to make sure that everybody was taken care of. So moving into my own business as Hey Sandy PR, it was easy because I'm doing the same thing just on a different platform. I'm helping businesses package their goods and make it newsworthy so you and me and whoever else is watching the news can say, ah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Because not everything is newsworthy. And it's hard sometimes to tell clients, well, what's the story value? What's the news value? There's no news value in this. Well, what is it? And sometimes there aren't any news values in stories. Sometimes they're just stories that you just put out there and there's a time for that and there's a time not for that so i really enjoy what i do okay that sounds amazing well it looks like you have a lot to say <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> which is perfect which is perfect especially for uh, for auditors so uh, now uh, let's move to the first part then as we want to talk about um telework 101 and what is telework and why do we need it? Well, here's what I telework is. So, telework 101, what is it? Why do we need it? You work from home, right? You work remote yes. or you work from home. Yes, what is the difference? Yes. Telework, work from home, work remote. Is it the same? Is it different? I think it's the same. Um, telework, I mean, you know, it's the same. For me, I mean, it, it could be a little different in that I work from home, so I have my own business. In the teleworking, I guess, um, the person who's teleworking could be required to go into the office every now and then, I guess. I, I mean, I, I, that's the only difference I would see what telework is. Um, but for me, I like to call it, I'm, I'm, I'm working remote from home, so I have so many different options to do whatever it is I wanna do in my business. And why do we need it? For people like me, who still have a family, uh, who has a family or who has, um, you know, not only having a family, you probably just don't want to be commuting every day back and forth. You know, it cuts down on this whole brick and mortar thing. It cuts down on the amount, the expenses that you have to, you got to put gas in a car. You have to, you know, buy, cl uh, you know, a bunch of new clothing for work. Yeah, you still have clothing that you have to wear for at home, but you know, you, you don't have to be meeting with people every day. In my field, I don't need to meet with somebody every day. There's a lot of work that I do behind the scenes, okay, that I don't have to sit in front of a customer every single day. So I think for, I think it creates more productivity and I think more companies, I think more companies are going to start to look towards teleworking more. I think especially because of COVID, and, you know, you want to be at 
you want to be home. You don't want to be, um, you know, out there getting whatever it is that's out there. So I think teleworking is here or, or remote working is here to stay. I really don't see me going back into a traditional work setting ever again. Can I, I, can I ask can't. you, for how long are you teleworking? Um, you may not. Oh, I've been doing this now for about uh, four years now. Which is a lot. Okay, so you're, you're an expert in teleworking. Business. Yes. When I first started do, doing my own business, I was working along with another friend of mine who, um, who has her own company and I was helping her out. And then I started realizing that, you know, she opened up an office and since she wanted, she's like, well, let's meet in the office once a week. Well, I was okay with that for once or twice, but then I had to drive a distance. I'm like, hold on. The very reason why I decided to do this was because I don't want to go to anybody's office. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have my own office in my house. I can put on sandals if I need to, to work. I don't need to be um, in somebody's office, you know? So I, I, I revisit that and I'm like, no, that's not gonna work for me. I need to be here where I can shut it down, close my door, close my office so I can go and I can go into the kitchen and I can have dinner made in no time. And that's easy for me and I love it. Yeah, I, I understand what you need. I've been working myself from remote at least or from home for so many years and Yes, but so this is your uh, work environment behind you, right behind you, right? Uh, is it yes. right now? Yes, this is my work environment behind me right now. I am in my living room right now, and um, I am going to, however, uh, my I have my son that's living with me, my 23-year-old. He just, uh, him and his fiance just bought a home. So they're going to be moving out in about a week and a half. So I'm taking his bedroom, which is downstairs, and I'm going to turn that into my office. That's a big step. So, yeah, so that's going to be a big change for me, which is going to be great. And I think that's going to help me also to set a little bit more boundaries mm -hmm. uh, and boundaries for myself, because I have a tendency of just jumping on and just, you know, when I'm done with what I'm supposed to be doing for the day, I jump back on and I start working and doing this and doing that. And a lot of times my daughter would say to me, my 14 year old would say to me, mommy, are you still working? Are you still working? And I have to be, I have to really um, pay attention to that from time to time. So I think with me setting up my own office in, you know, having the office set up and closing that door. And when I leave that door, I consider that work. I'm done. The door is closed and that's it. I don't go back in there until it's time to do it again the next day or unless there's an emergency. So I think that's going to be healthy for me as well. Which is a perfect transition for actually our, uh, our next question. So, how to set up a telework environment actually, for, especially for uh, newcomers in the telework environment. How to properly set up a telework environment from home, especially, what is important with your four-year experience? What was well, for me? What's important to, for me is, of course, you have to have a good software system, okay? And but you need to know how to use it. And I think we just noticed that I didn't. You know, I had some issues earlier when we were coming on. And you know, even though you set up your system and whoever is working with you, make sure that the people that you have working with you. Everybody's skill set is different, okay? Um, you can't have everybody who's working with you that has the same skill set, okay? You have to have a person who knows how to do all the software stuff. You have to have a person who probably uh, is doing the running around that needs to be done, which I do a lot of running around. Uh, Marie does all the um, software stuff that needs to be done. Kelly does, you know, she helps with clients in many different ways. Surround yourself by people who have different skill set. I think that is very, very important. And make sure you have what you need, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty simple in order to, it's kind of almost like the office. Think about it. If you went into the office, if you need a stapler, are you running around looking for it? You have that stapler right next to you. Mm -hmm. Have the things that you know that you need right next to you so that you can be as productive as possible during the times or uh, the time that you have allotted yourself to work from home. 
or to, to tell a remote or whatever you want to call it, uh, that you, if you're saying that you're going to work for five hours today, okay, well, you have everything that you need to have five hours of productivity, okay? Just set those goals and set that, set that right from the beginning. And I think everything will be okay if you do that. So actually, how do you find what is really important for you? Like when you are working in an office, everything is kind of accessible. Somehow you can always uh, go to the receptionist or for a stapler or whatever. But when you're setting up your own telework environment, how can you find what you need? Which questions do you have to ask yourself to actually find out what you really need? Well, I think you need to find it, first of all, what is the, what's your goal? What is your goal? Mm -hmm. And what do you need to be able to accomplish that goal? Okay. I can say that I, let's just say that I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I want to get, I do want to get my clients on TV. Well, what do I need in order to get my clients on TV? Well, first of all, I got to create a story depending on what the platform is. If I want to get my clients on to talk about something in COVID, well, it has to make sense. So what do I need to do? I need to research that. What am I researching? I need to find out the stats of whatever it is I want to do. So whatever it is you want to do or whatever business it is you're doing, you need to do the research to find out what, what do you need in order to accomplish where you're trying to get. Does that make sense? It I does. think it's pretty I think it's pretty simplistic. What do I need for me to get to where I need to go? What materials I need to have? Do I need a pen? Yes. Do I need a paper? Yes. Do I need a computer? Yes. Do I need a printer? Yes. No. Do I need a stapler? Maybe. Yes. No. Whatever it is you need, you jot that list down of what you need and then you get it. And once you put those things in place, then you start to do whatever it is you need to do. Makes sense. So it's better to be goal oriented whenever you are setting up your telework environment. Exactly. Set up the environment. And, and do you need a lot of quiet time? You know, if you need quiet time, then you need to put a place where nobody is going to bother you. Okay. For me, it's a little bit different because I need quiet time when I'm doing podcasts or when I'm doing, um, mm. when I'm interviewing a client. So you, and you mean like specific uh, time frames? Not specific time frames. Okay. I'll tell you during this whole thing, I, I have a son that has autism. He is 19 mm. years old and he's living with autism okay. and he's asleep right now. So, which is great. But during the times that, um, you know, the whole COVID and, and which we're still going through it right now and school had to stop and he's here at home. I had to revamp how I did things because he would, if he woke up right now, he'd run right here and come right here to the screen and see what I'm doing. Sometimes that's not appropriate for whatever it is I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I solicited my 14 year old daughter's help. Okay. And I said, Hey, listen, you want a job? And I started paying her to help me on a weekly basis. I said, okay, um, think about this as you having a job. Your job is to entertain your brother for two hours out of the day that I have to do this, so I have to do that. And it worked out really well. So she ended up making a, a, a lot of money um, for the last six, six to eight weeks that you know were out of school. She ended up making some good money. I think she liked it because she ended up going and buying herself something nice. So it, it all depends on your, your environment of where you are and what, what do you have going on in your life, okay? If you don't have anything going on in your life in terms of uh, kids or, you know, the, 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 your, your animals or whatever, and it's just you, it's easier because you can carve out that time to do what you need to do. But if you have to make adjustments, then you have to make those adjustments that, so that it works for you. Sure, that makes sense. So actually, that's all. Again, you are making the transition by yourself. <laughs> so, the next point actually is how to stay productive during telework, how to keep the productivity from home compared to uh, working uh, from an uh, office environment or like company environment? Set yourself up for the amount of time that you say you're gonna work or whatever time is required of you to work. For me, it's a little different because I have, 
I have my own business, so I can set my own schedule. But once I set that schedule, like if I have conference calls with clients, okay, I try to set those calls up on the same day, okay, mm -hmm. that I can call from in the morning right down to maybe two o'clock. I have a conference call every however, you know, every hour, every other hour. Set that for that one day, okay. Then the next day, I don't have to deal with clients on a daily basis like that. I don't have to talk to them on a daily basis unless there is something that I need to talk to them about or I'm getting them on, you know, or I'm, I'm writing a script or getting them on TV. So I can do all the busy, busy work that I have to do on certain days and then set aside days for the clients. It all depends on what you're doing in your business. If you know you're more busy in the morning of whatever you're doing, set aside that time to do what you have to do. Make sure, make sure that you have the mindset that you are in the office, okay? Is somebody watching you? If you were in the office, would you be walking around, going to the water fountain, going to do this, going to do that? Or would you be sitting down doing your work because you know the boss, boss is over there in the next room looking at what you're doing, okay? If you know that you are being paid to do a certain you know, a certain thing, do what you're supposed to do because anything less than that to me, and this is what I tell my kids, if you're being paid to do a job and you're cutting corners, you're stealing. Mm -hmm. You're stealing because you're not doing what you are paid to do, what you're supposed to do. So hold your own self accountable to do what you need to do and finish the task and then move on. And that's basically the one thing that I always tell people. Do, if you do what you're supposed to do, there's nothing else to be said. So actually, it's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Just do what you're <laughs> supposed to do. That's it. You know? And, and, and set yourself up. If you need help doing things, ask for help. A lot mm -hmm. of people sometimes feel like asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's not true. Asking for help is a sign of strength. There are times that I have things that's going on and I have no problems picking up the phone and calling another PR company and asking them for their advice. Okay, because I may not know everything. Hmm? So yeah. I don't Nobody have a does. problem calling and saying, hey, listen, here's the scenario. I need help with this. Can you, do you have a suggestion for this? Or do you have the suggestion for that? And a lot of times when you ask people for help, they'll do it. And, and, and it helps you that you don't have to spend so much time trying to figure something out rather than just pick up the phone and ask. True. But it, it might probably be more complicated for people to ask for help while they are teleworking than while they are in the office and their colleagues are accessible from, you know, just uh, from the next, uh, next office, next, uh, next desk. You know what, that, that can pose a problem too, because you're, yeah, your colleagues are right there next in the next cubicle, you know. But you know what? Let me go back to that. We are in the world of texting. Sometimes your colleagues are right next to you and you're still texting them. <laughs> okay, so th that works the same. I can't tell you the amount of times that I'm sitting right next to somebody in a meeting and I'm texting them. So you can, if you have an issue at home, and your person is not next to you, you can text them. I don't think it's overly complicated, unless there's some really, really complicated thing like a software, computer, this, or something that's extremely complicated. Well, that's a different story. I mean, it's not a one-fit-all mold. You know, it all depends on what you are doing and how complicated your job is. So I don't want, to, I don't want people to think that, well, you don't know what you're talking about because I don't know what I'm talking about in terms of if you are doing something that's more complicated. I'm saying if it's not a complicated thing and you know what, you're, you know what your goals are and what you're doing, it should be pretty simplistic for you if you put those systems in place to make it simplistic for you. That gets, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah, the, the, that's great. <laughs> sure. So, which brings us actually to the next part of our interview. And now, as a pretty experienced teleworker, do you have some actionable teleworking tips that you can uh, share? Like, really? Well, I would practical. say... Yeah, practical tips. 
when you're ready to go to work, make a task list. Okay. I have my list of tasks that I have to do today that I need to be, that I need to get accomplished today. So you almost not in a day. So you're not going to get everything done in one day, but make a task list. What are the things that are important that I need to accomplish today? Do I need to speak to this client? Do I need to speak to that client? Can this client wait? Or do I need to talk to this reporter? Or do I need to talk to that reporter? Or what deadlines do I have? Make a task list of what you have to do. Set your office hours for what you want, for the time that you want to give productive work to your, to your company or to your business, whatever you're doing. What are those productive hours? Don't say I'm going to work from, you know, all day today from nine to 10, from nine to nine o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the night. That may not be practical. Set practical hours for what you are going to do. Take a break in between. Set your lunch time. Okay, I'm going to break for lunch at this time. I'm going to break for a snack at this time. Okay, whatever it is, just the same that you would do in the office, do those things. Okay, and I would always say to people, be good to yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Be good to yourself. This is just work, okay? And this too shall pass. It's just work. Have fun at what you are doing. And if you don't have fun at what you're doing, find something that makes you have fun at what you're doing. Okay, I never want to be in a job because, oh my God, I'm making so much money and I'm miserable. I want to have fun at what I'm doing and I want to enjoy what I'm doing. So I may not make a whole lot of money in a certain field, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is more important than anything in life. Family, friends, faith, love, those are the important things in life. And that's what's important to me. I definitely agree. Actually, I have some questions uh, looking at, at your webcam and uh, seeing your background office. Did you make any change in your home to be able to telework? Or, or, I don't know, how long do you have this home? Did you start teleworking this home or you started teleworking after you got it? Did you make no, I, I started teleworking in here. I moved in here um, about four, maybe about five years ago, and I started you know, it's open my business at the same time. And I, I had to figure out where would I put my desk? So my desk is in the corner of my huge, of my living room. And that's, that's something that I really don't like because whenever, you know, if I have friends over, if I, if I mm. do entertain, when I used to do a lot of entertaining with, you know, COVID now you can, you know, one of the things that I normally did when I worked as a reporter was on Thanksgiving or any kind of holidays, I would, when I worked not as a reporter, I'm sorry, when I worked at the TV station, all the new reporters and producers who came over who were working and they didn't have families over here, I would invite them to my house um, during the, you know, 4th of July, um, Christmas, Thanksgiving, especially Thanksgiving, I would, allow, I would invite them over to my home. So um, this was one of the things that I didn't like was because of I have right here, my desk right here in the living room. So I'm so, I love my son. I'm going to miss him. But once he's gone, I can move all of this into my, into my own office. And that would be an adjustment for me, which would be great. So once I come out, my living room is my living room. I'm not seeing work. And my mind isn't you know, playing tricks on me. Oh my God, let me run to the desk and sit. Is there something I need to be doing? You know, so I think also that will help me as well when I, st when I move this into the, you know, to the office that I can close the door. That would be a great uh, transition for me. And, I, and I'm looking forward to it being something positive for me, for me to be able to shut things down when I need to shut it down and just come out and in the living room, hang out with the kids or go upstairs, that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, okay. That's all good. So, so actually, well, it was a pretty interesting discussion. We're already reaching the end of this uh, of this episode. So you, you. Have, you have a lot of insights for uh, for new teleworkers, even experienced teleworkers, because you have uh, actually a lot of experience also going through different stages of family life. Yes. That's absolutely. That's uh, very very interesting. Yes, I have six kids. <laughs> yes, okay. some of them are grown and have families of their own. So that's a plus. Whoa. Yes. 
<laughs> well, that's maybe a topic for another discussion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, to wrap up, uh, do you have uh, any any few uh, short sentences that you would like to say? Maybe uh, t tell us a little bit more about also your your business, uh, Hayes and DPR. Well, if you're looking for PR in um, West Palm Beach area or anywhere globally, if you need PR, um, hey, hit me up, heysandypr.com um, or heysandypr at gmail.com, or you can look on my website, and or you can look at your website, and you will have it right there on your podcast and we'll your website. It. We'll share the links. Yes, absolutely. So we'll share it, but um, it has been great. I, I enjoy what I do. Uh, thank you very much. It seems like you're enjoying what you're doing as well. I'm and that's great. Reaching I'm out and <laughs> you're having, are you having fun? Uh, always. <laughs> yes, good. Wonderful. But thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, it it's, it's been good. Yeah, well, for me too. So actually, this was a very interesting uh, episode. So uh, uh, it was International Business Consulting Podcast. I was talking with Ace and Mithia, right from Florida. Which city again? West Palm Beach, Florida. West Palm Beach, Florida. It has been a very interesting talk about uh, Telework 101 and also the coming uh, insightful tips for new teleworkers. Thank you very much, Sandy. Thank very you. Good. Very, very interesting uh, talking to you. And who knows, maybe talk uh, again in another episode. Wonderful. Thanks, Andy. Bye-bye.